I am a huge fan of SnowRunner, a game where you drive big trucks into mud and snow to deliver goods. And I like especially the Western Star 6900 Twinster because of its crazy size and its ability to carry a lot of things. It is mostly useless in very harsh terrain because of its size, but is very interesting truck using oil field in real life, so I decided to create a replica in LEGO Technique of this giant truck. Hi, I am Nico71 and I will show you how I create this LEGO Technique replica of the Western Star Twister truck. This creation will be divided into two videos. The first will be on the building of the chassis and the second about the bodywork. So let's start with the chassis. The first thing I do is to document myself about the truck, grabbing some pictures and video to understand its purpose, see the detail and ultimately a blueprint to scale easily the model in LEGO. Then, I decide which kind of creation I want to do, if it's motorized or not, in a specific color or not, because it affects how I will design. For this one, I wanted to create this truck with a motorization, basically drive, steering and winch, and have tractor tire for the style, so I had the choice between three sizes of tire. Starting with the biggest one, 10 cm of diameter, which is way too big for this creation. Why? Because the original model is very long, so it will result in a very massive LEGO creation and even with a full pack of motor, it will be slow and not very effective and easy to play. Second option is a medium tire from the last Mercedes Zitros set. It is interesting tire, especially because it matches with the new Gerrit hub and have a medium size, but it is still a bit too big for this creation, resulting in a big creation with only some motor reset function so, I do not think it's very relevant and I prefer to keep this tire from another creation which is smaller in real life, like a Tatra truck. Last option is a small tire of the Jeep set, only 56 mm of diameter, which will give a 50 cm long creation, which is reasonably enough to put the electronic in and have enough detail. So, I will try with those tires. Then, I open the small blueprint that I have found on the Western Star website in paint.net, then zoom it to fit the LEGO tire, and then building a well-based tool which will help me to position the wheel. So, we have all we need to start building, let's take some important part and starting building the different elements. The axles are a very important part of this project because they support the weight of the model and are motorized. That is why I will start by this instead of making the bodywork for instance. I have started by the front axle which is not motorized but have the twin stair steering. The first approach was to build two axles which is linked with a turntable and act as a pendular axle. The steering is made using rack and pinion. In order to have different turning radius I used different length of the knuckle. I prefer this solution over a gearing, because the gearing tends to add play in the mechanism and you have to carefully match the gear to have the two axles centered. On the first prototype, the steering axle go through the turntable, which I found that it was a good idea, but it was not. Because when the suspension works, it affects the steering, and when the steering is at the end stop, the pendular axle could not move. So. I decided to uncouple the suspension and the steering function by using universal join. The two functions work now independently, but I have to be careful with suspension travel to avoid the U-joint to be dismantled. That is why I have attached two connecting rows to avoid the play of the turntable and secure the travel of both axles. Unfortunately, this solution having both front axles linked with a turntable was not easy to attach to the chassis because it required that both axles were attached independently to the chassis and connect in some way using linkage or spring to create the suspension. It gives either a small traveling suspension, either a complicated build. So, I decided to get right off to the turntable between the two front axles and rework completely the axle in independent live axle. So, here is a final version. 
Each front axle is independent live axle attached underneath with a link and linked together on each side with an oscillating arm. Create on each side a parallelogram which enable to have the travel of each suspension and the crossing axle. It is the same building as on the Z-Tros for instance but in a smaller way. You can note that I have put the underneath link as low as possible to increase the distance between this link and the oscillating arm resulting in a stronger building and better stability. We can note also that I have put some space between the oscillating arm and the chassis with a half push to have a bit more freedom on the suspension travel during the crossing axle. It is the same construction as the Zitro set, but as this axle is smaller, the distance between the two oscillating arms is smaller too, which affects the available travel and explain why I did not want to have the arm touching the chassis. To finish, you can note that I used angle lift arm to connect the chassis to the axle link, which is very useful part to reinforce the structure. Let's move on on the rear axle, which has not steering of course, but a draft train on the four wheel. I have started in the same way as the front axle, with scaling the rear axle to the blueprint. Then I started building, first with a frame and differential for each axle and then connecting together with a turntable. It was the same mistake as I did on the front axle by using a turntable, which complicates the suspension and limits the travel. So I have tried to use the ball joint instead, but it was too massive to fit the scale. So, for the same reason, I have get rid of the central turntable to have both rear axle independent and start reworking the draft train. As I have not enough place to put the universal joint between the two axles, I decided to use gearing to put it on the top and then U joint shaft connect the both axles. Then I must connect and secure the axle on the chassis. It is made in the same way as the front axle, with two oscillating arms on the top and two links below. But the difference is that I was not able to put the door no link as low as I can because of the big frame, so I put them just below the oscillating arm. It worked, but the distance between the two links was not really important, which led to a lack of stability on the rear axle. That is why I have added two links which connect the two rear axles to increase the sturdiness, plus a lateral link which acts as a panha hold to limit the play in lateral movement. This final version is mostly the same, but I have increased the distance between the oscillating arm and the central links, which help to have better guidance, but the lower link between each axle are still necessary to avoid the play and have a well guided axle. Here is the result, a working and robust tandem live axle with draft train. We can now try to marry front and rear axle together. So the basic idea is to connect both front and rear axle and put between the necessary electronic elements such as the motor and the battery. I have not mentioned before but I choose to go to the Control Plus motor instead of the power function system because the power function system is getting old now and start to be expensive. As the Control Plus motor are available in some set, it was easier to work with it. But I have carefully designed the draft train and the steering to be compatible with the power function system, especially the battery box, but we will talk more about it later. So, I took the part I need to have in the chassis and put them in a row position, then building a new well-based tool and comparing to the blueprint. Of course, it is too long, as the blueprint I have is a short well-based version, but it fills well the medium well-based version and there is also a long well-based version available as in the SnowRunner game. Then, I built a central chassis using beam and connector and fixing the drive motor which drive a central gear connected to the rear axle with U-join. It is a pretty classic solution here. It enables to switch easily the gearing to adjust the speed. I put the battery box in the center and attach both axles. You can note that I have fixed the hub with some connector instead of the built-in hole. There are two reasons for that. First is that it enables me to use the angle beam which is very useful to reinforce the structure, especially the chassis. And second, because in that way the model is compatible with the old power function battery box with no modification of the chassis. I have now a road chassis, I can start testing to see if everything works fine. First thing to do is to create a basic program using the official LEGO app, the Powered Up. 
I'd use motor block for the drive motor and servo motor for the steering one. I put some cross block to reverse the rotation if needed and a basic control profile composed of slider with return to center. I affect the correct slider to the correct function and output and we are ready to test. First with the steering, with the calibration at the end stop, you can see here that decoupling the steering and the suspension is useful to have a correct functioning. Then I can test the collision with the mud guard when the well is steered. Secondly, the drivetrain, with the two motors which has to work in the same direction and have the correct speed. For that, let's take a quick ride. From my perspective, the speed is good, not too slow to be fun and not too fast to be easy to control. And the steering was good, especially with the different turning radius and the rail differential. I will adjust the speed if necessary at the end when the model will be completed with the additional weight due to the bodywork and other detail. Picking at the bodywork, I will show you how I create it in the next episode of this building diary. So please subscribe if you want to get the notification when it is available. If you watch this video later and that the second part is already released, please check the card upright. Thanks for your attention. It is a new video format that I tried by making building diary of what I build, so with my design process, the result, but also the fails and how I overcome them. So if you like this content and want to make some remark, please comment. If you are interested by my LEGO work, I put some useful link in the description, as well as a recommended video and a playlist to discover my work. See you next time for the next video on this Western Star track in LEGO Technique. Take care, play well, bye.